Hello everyone and now welcome to game three in the series between it is going to be Xiao Shishi versus Shun here on Amazonia game three in this best of three game one and game two could not be more different game one uh, just an undead beatdown with the Naga Sea Witch early on as that second hero picking apart the un picking apart that night elf army meanwhile game two warden as the first hero and then the warden completely harassing all by her lonesome self letting the panda constantly um, creep up as well and then we ended up seeing two level six ultimate abilities come in from the night elf in avatar of vengeance and earth storm and fire let's take a look at how things will be unfolding here tomb of relics now coming in altar of darkness also coming in as well it looks like it is going to be a death knight opening would be surprised if it was anything else in this matchup meanwhile what will the hero be here in game um three it looks like it will be the demon hunter so apparently the night elf player only wanted the warden on the large map um on death road as opposed to amazonia amazonia a bit smaller so unable to use that blink nearly as effectively to get across the map for all of that harassment we can see that there is some ancient of war creeping and um, being prepped over here at the seven o'clock position it is a 533 creep camp with a renegade wizard <laughs> meaning we should most likely get lightning shield on the archer the lightning shield on the archer will deal damage to both the renegade wizard and a rogue and then um, only the renegade wizard once one of the rogues gets too low on health all right let's see if i am right as things do get underway there however is a ghoul now in the fight and the ghoul there is that lightning shield and it's just gonna park itself off right there beautiful position getting all extra damage on all of these units as the archer <clears throat> should pull off to the right here in just a second oh going back over here instead and it is going to be going after one rogue it looks as though another rogue will get taken down and this is just textbook textbook play by the night elf meanwhile over here on the north the death knight deciding not to do um counter creeping instead actually wanted to creep out his his own 533 creep camp and that's going to be pretty effective as well as the ghouls can um, go toe to toe pretty easily the death knight does have death coil also bringing in some rod of necromancy as the wisp wants to come in for a detonation i don't believe however that is going to work out very well unless it gets very very lucky and oh it is going to detonate does get one skeletal minion and some mana on that death knight death knight now low on mana there is the rest of the mana now burned away by that demon hunter demon hunter sitting at level two with gloves of haste looking very strong as we move in to the final portions of the game sorry the mid portion of the game so what are the strategies we expect to see night elf versus undead it is going to boil down to the tech to tier two and with that very very fast tech to tier two trying to get that slaughterhouse up for those obsidian statues meanwhile the demon hunter is still wandering around here the death knight coming back around as the skeletal minions are going to be pushing there so far the demon hunter is still running circles as the death knight trying to give chase here there is the level two on the death knight now so with unholy aura should be able to catch up there's a bit of mana burn on the death knight and ensuring that there is not going to be any death coils coming in and that's always a very very good trade anytime you can make sure that you are really removing any chance of a 200 hit point heal on a ghoul that is always very effective meanwhile back down over here the hunter hall is being constructed we can see that the mantle of intelligence is now being left behind um, these apprentice wizards attacking with that little bird animation not quite sure what exactly that is but apparently their attacks do definitely look like birds meanwhile the death knight now looking to come in and try and surround this demon hunter the demon hunter is just gonna pull away and he's really buying himself a lot of time now with that ancient of war nearby the ancient of war with that 45 to 55 damage is gonna scare off much of this and the death knight is not really using his time very very wisely if it was only the death knight here then i would say that this harassment is very effective as the ghouls could be trying to creep while the death knight is away but that is not what we're seeing at all instead the demon hunter the demon hunter has been able to creep um while the 
with his archers and an Ancient of War, while the Death Knight is also still just giving a little bit of a chase here. So, so far, this is looking fairly, fairly even. We do see a Wisp ready to go. We are going to be teching the Tree of Ages. Could we see another early Panda? As the Night Elf player has really been favoring the Panda at level at tier two meanwhile the death knight is the death knight going to be pulling out the same trick from game one and trying to go for a naga sea witch that is definitely a possibility as the demon hunter decides to buy a pair of nikes to just run a bit faster now your performance may vary don't go to your local foot locker just to try to run faster um and i definitely do not endorse any pair of shoes making you run faster and they're just more comfortable Anyways, coming back around, yeah, a little bit of a tangent. This game um, pretty much unfolding very, very standard. You can see that the Demon Hunter now trying to get away. He is getting stuck with those Frost Arrows, so that could be a problem. But the Naga Sea Witch doesn't have Boots of Speed, so it will not be able or she'll not be able to catch up. During that time, though, the Demon Hunter was able to pull away the rest of the army off of the tavern in order to pick up the Panda, which was a brilliant move. As we see here, all right, Demon Hunter now looking to engage. We can see that there is the Death Knight now looking and wandering around, trying to figure out where the rest of the army is. Oh, we could have had a surround there if that Death Knight was a little bit silly. Is it going to be able to slip through as the Ancient of War now eating trees in order to maintain his, well, cell count, I guess. Meanwhile, the Demon Hunter now continuing to make its way over. Frost Arrow coming back. A little bit of a back and forth fight still coming in as both sides don't seem really sure about what to do. Here we go. Um, it really feels like both sides um, just have their definitive strategies that we're going to see, and it's all going to come down to execution and perhaps a little bit of luck. Now, StarCraft 2 generally the better player does win more often warcraft 3 does have a bit more luck involved because of surrounds because of item drops and things of that nature this is one of the reasons why warcraft 3 has a much more mysterious element to it just because you can't just because you can predict all of the units in the game doesn't mean that you can predict every single item a staff of silence or a, a full 25 second potion of divinity really really can change the course of the game rather quickly as you're in as a hero who has no reason to be alive stays alive for 25 seconds longer absolutely destroying an army so far the panda is still off over here looks like the kobo taskmaster will fall the death knight still trying to come over and is it going to be enough the death knight does move fairly fast here and the panda does make its way over as the death knight oh staff of preservation sending the demon hunter back here Perhaps going to rejuvenate a bit. But I don't think I've seen a Moonstone used once by the Night Elf player, which does still surprise me. Naga Sea Witch still um, creeping by herself. Panda creeping by himself as the Death Knight still looking for where that Panda could possibly be. So both players um, using their first heroes to try and stop the second heroes and both players completely unsuccessful as we take a look at the minimap and it is a game of hide and seek where for some reason the other oppon their opponents cannot find the majority of the army. There is the engagement. Death Knight now has been brought over. We could perhaps see a creep out of this Rock Golem camp, but we need to get an Ancient of War over there first without any Druids of the Claw. That is going to be difficult as we are now going into Mastery Training, I believe. Yes, Mastery Training is now underway so that um, Panda should be able to get to level 3 after creeping out that Orange Creep Camp. There is that Druid of the Claw. Now, what is going to be going down? It looks like the N Night Elf player has... A little bit of a difficult time here. The undead army is just very, very strong at this point. And without the fan of knives and AoE that we saw in game one, the ghouls are much more of a threat. The reason why is you need to burst down those low hit point ghouls. Otherwise, the obsidian statues will heal them back up far too quickly. Even with level three breath of fire, one scroll of healing will cancel that. And then the Obsidian Statue can just maintain that hit point level for a very, very long time. Druid of the Claw, Roar, now going to be going into bear form. You can see this is one of the few Night Elf players that I actually see keep some Druids actually in Druid form. 
Druids are caught in Druid form to get faster and better mana regen. We've constantly seen rejuvenations, but we've also seen that come back to bite him as with only 580 hit points, Death Coil plus, plus Frost Nova is nearly instant death in most instances. Panda now making its way off over here to the 9 o'clock position and creeping out that shop. Death Coil hitting that Demon Hunter, not really doing much there as the Death Knight. Still sitting just shy of level 3. Another Mana Burn comes in as more damage is still being dealt. The Demon Hunter, however, fairly, fairly fast, able to run across the map. Panda sitting at level 2 will get to level 3 here in just a moment. There it is. And at level 3, level 2 Breath of Fire um, may make enough. But what was that? A quick, quick turnaround as the Demon Hunter getting taken down at level 2. I thought he was able to escape, but no. Picking up a Naga Sea Witch at just... Or having that Naga Sea Witch there. Um, I believe the Naga Sea Witch was just picked up and getting to level 2 after the Demon Hunter fell. Very nice using those cold arrows. Being able to slow down that Demon Hunter enough. And then finish it off with maybe perhaps a Fork Lightning. Sorry, the Lich. The Lich was added with the Frost Nova. Nagasi, which was the second hero. Alright, Ancient of War is going to fall. It really feels like the Undead player is still on top for the reasons noted earlier. And I don't believe the Night Elf player will be able to get back into this. The Demon Hunter is trying to make its way over. Staff of Preservation saves it. Panda picking or Panda over there to lend his buddy a hand. Perhaps a replenishment potion could be used by the Demon Hunter. Nope, looks like it will just be straight Moonwell use. As we are now looking to creep out perhaps this bottom right hand side of the map, this mercenary camp. Dryad's now looking to come in. This could be a bad fight here. Illusions now being brought to the table. As what is going on, the Illusions wandering back and forth. And it looks like unit formation um, move is actually on the Demon Hunters. Just sitting there, wandering back and forth as the Panda with the Wand of Illusion. Just kind of giving a, a little bit of a funny laugh. And wondering, hey, who are you going to really try and take down? Destroyers could, however, um, devour magic there. I'm not sure why the Destroyers are not engaging. Destroyers, when they have mana, it is the perfect time for them to engage. As they actually deal that bonus splash damage. But without it, I'm not sure what's going to be going on as we are looking at all of these creep camps getting cleared out. Renegade, Wizard, and the rest of this creep camp should fall relatively easily. There we go. Holy Aura now coupled alongside Unholy Aura. Or sorry, Devotion Aura inside, alongside Unholy Aura. And this is still waiting for the final battle to take place. Both sides are not really re ready to engage each other. And this is making for a long, drawn-out fight with no one really dealing damage to the other. But as the game does go longer, I still believe that the Undead has a bit of an advantage. Dryads now making their way over here, taking a look. 70 over 70 supply. Meanwhile, 60 over 60. You don't have to be a math major or go to four years of college in order to figure out who has the advantage there. The Abomination just coming back over, and it looks like there is going to be an engagement there. Oh, come on. Yep, Devour Magic giving more mana to those Destroyers once again, as the Dryads have to be extremely careful. Dryads don't take any damage from those Destroyers, but the Crypt Fiends do have um, a very, very slow attack, but that means that they can shoot and scoot extremely well. Let's take a look at what's going to be going on. Roaches... Not roaches. Crypt fiends are like roaches. Crypt fiends now making their way over. Gonna try and push their way through. Panda now trying to back their way off. We can see that there are at least five Druids of the Claw here. If the Druids of the Claw can capture or somehow get to a couple of these Crypt fiends, then things could go extremely well in their favor. All right, there is the absorb mana, I believe. Yes, there is some mana now in those destroyers. The destroyer is going to try and take down the bears. Bears taking a lot of damage. There's a breath of fire. Very, very low hit point. Druid of the Claw already. Staff of Preservation saving one. It looks as though this Druid of the Claw not going to have as good of a day. No, it's going to be saved as well. But now with both of those Staff of Preservations on cooldown, that is not looking to be good. All right, Rejuvenation 
coming across on both of the Druids of the Claw. They're going to be going back in the bear form in just a second. More mana now getting restocked on all of these bears. And this is one of the things that I really like by about this Night Elf player. He is actually watching his mana on these Druids. By maintaining a high level of mana across all of these Druids, he's able to recover from these fights much better as opposed to just walking around with these Druids of the Claw in, in bear form. Now they are going to go back into bear form here, but some of them have a good amount of mana. That one is going to try and regenerate a bit more before joining joining the fight there. As we now see, oh, there we go. Destroyers now coming in. Are the Dryads going to be able to turn around and get some shots off? There's a Breath of Fire. There goes two Ghouls already. And that may be a very, very good engagement. But is it going to be enough as the Undead now starting to clean up? Demon Hunter now finally sitting at three. Destroyers now trying to clean up here. The Dryads perhaps should be focusing down Destroyers as both sides are still engaging here. All right, scroll attack. Town Portal now on the Lich. He's going to be backing away from here. Death Knight. There's the Staff of... I believe that was a Staff of Preservation. Yeah, Staff of Preservation alongside a Scroll of Town Portal in order to get all of those units back home. Demon Hunter now looking to creep out the top left-hand side of the map. One of the few creep camps remaining. And this could be bad news as the Destroyers could be getting there rather quickly. The Destroyers, however... Have, a, have an uphill battle if they want to try to creep out the 11 o'clock position since that position is in fact um, mag magic immune for many of those rock golems. All right, it looks as though the Druids of the Claw are going to be trying to take down all of these brigands. Brigands to get taken down. Here comes the engagement. Crypt Fiend's going to get off a couple of those web shots as it does deal a large amount of damage to those dryads. Plus the fact that there was an orb of corruption minus negative three armor in total means that that poor, poor Dryad really took simply too much damage. Belt of Giant Strength may be given to the Panda, as the Panda is an extremely strength-based hero and does deal a lot of damage based upon his strength. So far, we are going to be seeing the Panda now trying to make its way in. Is it going to be able to get off a Breath of Fire? And this is just a straight-up battle here. Who's going to come out ahead as we see a Mana Burn now on the Death Knight? We could see a Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire, Bears get taken down. Abomination. Oh, the Devour Magic removed. I believe the Drunken Fire um, Hex or debuff as the Destroyers still don't have mana though. All right, Bear going to get taken down. Now we see level 3 on the Lich. This is going to be a battle to the end as the Death Knight... Now, a Breath of Fire now happening again against all of these units. How, the bears need to somehow focus down the Crypt Fiends, but they are not falling. Staff of Preservation saving as the Death Knight escapes at 188 hit points. Lich now taking a whole bunch of damage. A Staff of Teleportation could be brought back over. There's a Breath of Fire. There's a Scroll of Town Portal. There goes the Naga Sea Witch falling at level 3. The Death Knight, however, getting a um, level 4 somehow. I don't know what died there but able to get to level 4. Demon Hunter does not have the Staff of Teleportation, was unable to rejoin up with his army, and that was a huge, huge mistake. We do see that there is a Sentry Ward off over here, but I believe it will... Oh, it may actually catch sight of this base now being placed down here at just the wrong time. Yes, it is going to be spotted as the Destroyers with 2-0 upgrades, Crypt Fiends with 2-0 upgrades, looking to see where they can go next. All right, if the Demon Hunter can clear out this Rock Golem creep camp, this is going to be huge as, oh, the Destroyers are now being brought over. There is some Devour Magic as the Rock Golem getting completely surrounded. It gets taken down. There's some very, very nice, good amount of gold there as the Dryads could try to do it again once more, try to pull back all of those units of Destroyers, trying to stay just far enough away as we see both sides trying to creep out this rock golem creep camp. All right, the granite golem, was it already taken down? No, granite golem now finally being brought over. Boulder to the head takes um, or stuns a unit there. Meanwhile, another rock golem is going to get taken down. There it goes. Level four on the demon hunter. As we are now looking at the granite golem finally going to get taken down. Granite Golem gets off a slam there. It looks, like, it looks as though the granite golem will fall. L Legion of Doomhorn. And that is going to give Unholy Aura to the Panda, giving him faster movement speed and better regeneration. So far, it looks as though the Demon Hunter now making its way over could perhaps shoo away all of those Destroyers. There's the attack and coming in, dealing a lot of damage to those Destroyers. He's actually purposely splitting or spreading that poison damage across multiple Destroyers so that that damage over time can actually tick. Tree of Life sitting at about 300 life. 
definitely definitely on the verge of falling but both sides really unable to engage right now as we can see is there a creep camp over here i didn't see anything uh let's see oh yep there is one guy right there all right demon hunter now trying to catch up to those destroyers there's a little bit of damage over time for you nine damage a second for nine seconds i believe 81 extra damage as you return all the way back home meanwhile tree of life is now done it is going to start to entangle that gold mine as we are looking at the ghoul who realized that there is no expansion here or sorry no creeps here all of the creep camps have pretty much been cleared out we are looking at um, a straight up engagement for the next battle and who will come out on top level four on the panda level four on the demon hunter meanwhile level four on the death knight level three on the lich naga sea witch is sitting at level three as well supply 79 over 80 compared to 64 over 80 undead definitely having the advantage there but there is in fact this entangling gold mine if the game can go long enough to um, really get this gold mine to pay for itself and there is a war of attrition then the night elf will definitely have the game right now if it looks like the crypt fiends want to push forward this is going to be the final push with the abominations now making their way in and we could have the engagement come in the dryads getting off a little bit of slow poison damage but no disease cloud, surprisingly, on any of these units. No disease cloud on the abominations mean um, that the dryads will always pretty much be at full hit points. As disease cloud is one of those poisons that simply seems to last forever. Dryads and bears now looking to engage. Both sides very, very cautious. 72 over 80 supply. As we are now looking into the final fight, what is going to be going on? There is the abominations up front. There's a fork lightning. All right, one bear quickly taken down already. Abomination not falling nearly as quickly. Are we going to see a death coil there? There's a staff of preservation saving. There's a mana burn. There's a death coil finally. As we're still looking at this fight trying to come into play drunken haze breath of fire as we can see a scroll of healing has been used to try to counteract it rejuvenation coming across but that's just going to be devour magic bait as you can see that those destroyers are still backing away destroyers looking very strong now why are they backing off there are no hippogriffs at all the dryads now trying to win the war uh, by themselves doing a little bit of that spear throwing and abomination may get taken down here but the Demon Hunter still having a little bit of an uphill battle. One Abomination will go down as the Panda now pretty much out of mana. Not in this fight. All right, let's take a look at this. Both sides still fighting. There is that Disease Cloud. Staff of Preservation saves another bear. But the Demon Hunter now in trouble only to get saved as well. All right, Rejuvenation needs to come across very, very quickly. There we go. There's some Rejuvenation. Demon Hunter now being brought forth as this base is taking a beating. The Wisp now being brought over here. Fork Lightning plus uh, Frost Nova could take them all down, but all of the units are low on mana. There is the Wisp trying to train it back up as the Tree of Life even joining in on the fight. There's the Breath of Fire and uh, Crypt Fiend takes, um, gets taken down as the Mana Burn on the Death Knight, pretty much preventing any more Death Coil heals. All right, still more fights coming in. No more potions of invulnerability, but the Dryad count is now extremely low, meaning that the, oh, sorry, the Crypt Fiend count is now extremely low, meaning that the Dryads may be able to get away. Panda, very, very low on hit points, trying to get away. Down to 95 hit points, now running off to the north. Does have boots of speed as the Naga Sea, which falls at level three. Demon Hunter now trying to give chase to the Lich. Is it going to be enough there as it is still getting in a little bit more damage? Coming back across, there is the Death Coil there as the Death Knight did have enough as the Panda now running back. And it looks like the Panda is actually going to come out ahead 54 over 80 compared to 32 over 80. <clears throat> All right, this is looking like it will be coming to an end. The Death Knight not going to be able to finish all of this. Oh, what is this? A couple of Druid of the Claw now trying to get away. This Druid of the Claw in, um, in now bear form, able to come back over as the Dryads are now being brought. In come a couple of Dryads to finish off some Ghouls. There goes another Ghoul. Even the Acolytes trying to join in on the fight as a Frost Nova on the Demon Hunter. Mana Burn off on the Obsidian Statue. Not much mana left there at all as there goes another Breath of Fire. So far, the uh, Destroyers are still able to deal a fair a bit of damage. and But this is still looking extremely good for the Demon Hunter. Wait, who's going to lose their hero first? Death Knight. Very low. There's the... There is the Breath of Fire and that is the game. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game three in this series. 
Night Elf taking it two to one.